welcome. Uh, we're going to be doing a demo of a Baobab today. Uh, it's going to be a series of what I call mini panels, the size of 40 by 15 centimeters. Uh, you approach it very much in a impressionistic manner, no highly high, high detail, uh, but very effective size in it there. Uh, the paper that we're working on is actually not paper, it's a mount board. It's on the Dale Rowney Crescent make, uh, acid-free. Remember, we always use an acid-free surface. And the uh, rem the colors that we'll be using here are all from the Rembrandt range, basically. Um, so I suggest you download the color chart from your off the internet. Um, and then if you're using a different color uh, or a different make of, of, of a pastel, then you can match up the colors uh, accordingly. Um, so we're starting off with the sky. This is sort of the basis for the clouds that I've got going here. Uh, I usually in all my pictures uh, at the base of the picture plus the clouds, I use a Rembrandt uh, burnt umber number 10. Okay, the next color that I'm using here is a burnt umber number 9. So the effect that I want to get on this picture is very much of a warm look to it. And um, I don't want any blues or grays in it at all. So uh, we, we're now using a orange light point 9. This is the, going to be the, the, uh, the color of the grass. It will shape itself up later on. Um, I start to rub it in, uh, but I still maintain a bit of the texture or the, how can I say, the, uh, I don't take the texture or I don't rub it completely away so that it's a solid color. However, the top I am, because uh, that is um, uh, the background color that we got there. But we rub it just sufficiently that uh, you don't sort of see the, the, the paper shining through. Just to warm up the clouds a bit, I'm putting in a bit of that same orange light, number 9, uh, just to give some nice warmth into the clouds. And that then that's also that it helps to enhance the uh, highlight that'll, that'll come through. Um, so the burnt umber number 10 will eventually actually become the shadow areas of the, of the actual clouds themselves. So just remember, clouds aren't flat. Um, they are around um, little balls of what I would describe as little bits of cotton wool. Um, and so you've got to have light and shadow uh, uh, coming through all the way to get that shape shape within them. So yeah, I'm just putting a little bit of that orange light in there just, just to give that a little bit of warmth uh, into the actual clouds themselves. Um, and now I'm moving on to a lemon yellow number 12. All right, um, uh, I, I, I prefer that to actually using a white itself. Uh, white can be a bit on the cold side, a little bit insipid, uh, but the the number 12 is almost a white anyway, but it's a nice warm white. So you can see, look at the lovely effects that you're getting there now. And uh, you want you to notice that I'm just rubbing gently. I'm not taking away all my um, all my textures in it there. Uh, we'll come back a little later on and just polish off there. I'm just putting a little bit more um, warmth into the sky, sky in terms of putting some of that um, orange light number nine in there as well. Uh, it also helps to bind my picture together. You know, I like to repeat colors uh, in the picture itself. So it just binds everything together. So be careful of landing up with two pictures in one. So one part of the picture looks divorced from the other side. Good. Um, we now want to start uh, moving into the uh, the sketching of the baobab itself. Uh, I always mark off my boundaries. So the uh, at the base there, I've given you the, the thickness of the trunk of the tree. Um, so th those are my markers. I mustn't go beyond that. And uh, believe me, uh, often it, it had happened in my early days. You start off, you don't put the markers in, and the tree grows and grows. Eventually, it's completely out of the picture. And uh, you don't want that. You always want to just confine it unless you're having the uh, on the so on the side of the picture, you've got the trunk that's actually coming right through. I'm using a Mars Violet 0.7. I love Mars Violet. Oh, it's a lovely color. It's got so many applications to it. Uh, the one caution I would actually just mention, um, uh, sorry uh, Rembrandt, but your uh, your Mars Violet 0.3, uh, it, it, it somehow it cakes very quickly. It's a lovely color. Uh, but very frustrating working with it. You've got to keep going back to it and having to um, scrape off the, the compressed pastel. Um, I want you to see there, I actually rubbed the, uh, the, the bush line up there. That's going to be the distant bush line. And once again, just see, I haven't rubbed all the detail away. There's still just a fraction of detail, uh, but we're trying to now just get the, um, uh, that'll be the, 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 the sort of distant bush line, nice and fuzzy and far back. Um, I am using my pastel now flat on its side. 
and I'm pressing very, very hard. So because I want a nice sharp edge on the past on the tree itself. So the harder you press, the harder the uh, the, the or the neater the edge that you get there. Um, so the, you get soft pastels and hard pastels. Um, I can't go into them now, uh, but you'll find that the Rembrandts are nice in between us, so you can use them for detailed work as well as for uh, for highlight work. Uh, the soft pastels give you beautiful highlights and, and uh, 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 kind of so they're soft and vibrant. Uh, the harder the pastel, that they doesn't have that. So we, that's the way I actually work with it. So and we're holding my. So I started off with my pastel flat on its side, pressing hard on whichever edge. That so in other words, if it's on the uh, left side of the trunk, I actually press harder on the pastel on the left side. Um, and then, and then as I go away, so instead of working with the pastel flat on its side, I now sort of turn it into almost a, a 20 degree uh, angle. So that we, um, and then for the finer lines, I then go into a 45 degree angle. So I'm using the sharp edge of the top of the pastel, uh, and that gives me the actual line there. Um, then, if you really, really struggle with the, the, the thin little branches in it there, uh, you can always use a pastel pencil. Nice, it's the hardest of all the pastels, uh, but it helps with your detail work in that there, and you're able then just to get those nice sharp little lines. Uh, I've got used to using the pastel itself. Um, and the thing that I want you to notice now is the actual branches that I'm, um, I'm drawing in there, uh, they go from thick to thin. Okay, it's um, in South Africa or Africa, uh, it's probably one of the only, if not, I don't know of any other one at the moment now, but uh, uh, it's the only tree where the branches sort of thick and they, they, they slowly uh, reduce down to a thin, um, thin little branches in that thing. Um, uh, so that's one of the characteristics of, of the tree. Uh, it's always important when doing trees uh, to get the characteristics of the tree. Um, in the, in the when you look at source material on the baobabs, you'll find that uh, the uh, uh, there's a couple of uh, big branches in that there and a multitude of little ones. All right, so just always be careful of not putting too much in, um, and that just comes with experience. Uh, if you sometimes you duplicate what is actually in the tree itself, the tree painting becomes uh, very uh, busy, and it's got these multitudes of branches in it there. So just uh, do a little bit of cropping, a little bit of artistic license, uh, and you'll see the final picture here that uh, we we don't have uh, that sort of real maze of of little branches in it there. So um, I'm starting to shape the tree now, and uh, we sort of looking at a, a one to three sort of thickness, in other words, uh, the height and, and, and the width, um, but it varies. It's, it can be as much as um, um, six times, so it, it's, there's nothing constant about a bay bat, all right. Uh, they have different colors in that there, but um, uh, on my Patreon site, I have a Patreon site in that there. I'll be very shortly going into a uh, in-depth uh, study of the baobab, the different colors, the different shapes, and um, you, it is it is a fascinating tree. Fast, I just love love, love painting past, um, uh, pastel in pastel, uh, doing the actual um, baobabs themselves. Um, you've got all this light and shadow and light falling over it, and you, but the big problem that you have is foreshortening. Okay, so you've got to have branches coming towards you, going up on the side and then at the back. Uh, otherwise, it's it's uh, you've got uh, you've got no three dimensional look on the tree itself. So as you're painting along, I just what I normally do is I just bang in the the um, the, um, uh, the branches and that there, and then afterwards I'll have a look and say okay which which ones which ones can come forward, which ones can go back, and then uh, so also just um, uh, if you want to just notice there that your uh, the the tree is sort of nicely balanced. It's not in the middle of the picture. Okay. Um, you can't do that. Um, that's that's no, that's a, a compositional no-no in terms of art. Okay, so you can't put your baby exactly in mind. It's just a little bit to the left. Um, we're going to look at balance in the picture as well. But please, uh, not in the middle. Just like a road, not in the middle. That's that's artistic terms. That's illegal. You can't do things like that. All right. So we're busy shaping in that there, and um, you can see how that um, I'm into the little branches, and I'm using the sharp edge of my pestle. I'm holding the pestle 45 degrees. Uh, but when I come to do these little little more branches, I actually hold my pestle very, very softly. Um, uh, because the the, um, uh, the harder you hold the pestle, uh, the thicker the branches are going to come out when you actually 
suppress them and that thing. So just just look at that aspect when 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 doing it. Uh, but as I said, if if you're battling at this with this point now with these little branches, uh, just use a pastel pencil or a Faber Castell. Um, that's also a very nice hard pastel, and then you can uh, you know you can get that detail that you want there. Uh, but like I said, I'm I'm, I'm actually used to it. Um, I want you to see how also that the um, uh, the clouds that I've had behind there um, are. Um, I'm going to say they, they, they're contrasting nicely with the tree itself. Uh, but we still got a little bit of cloud sort of poking out on the right side of it there. Uh, but it, it gives a nice little backdrop to the tree, etc. And um, you are um, able to, um, uh, I'm going to say, just it enhances the actual silhouette of the tree. Um, you see a little, a little bit of rubbing there. I want no paper shining through on the, on the actual uh, tree itself, on the branches or the trunks. Uh, so just a light rub with your finger. And uh, that works pretty, pretty well. The um, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm I'm coming forward. So in other words, I'm doing uh, the bush that is or the trees or whatever are, that are in line with the actual uh, baobab itself. So it's on that same plane. Um, so we're using the uh, same color. Okay, all done. The background color, foreground color. It's all in terms of the bush and the tree. All the same color. It's all that burnt amber. Um, uh, sorry, um, that Mars violet color. All right, so you can see actually also that if you just by pressing harder and softer, uh, you can get different tones in the actual color itself. Um, so that background bush there, just having just applied it softer uh, and uh, giving it a little bit of rub, uh, it looks more distant away there. Um, the what I'm doing now is sand, uh, so that's it's a sand that will be showing in between the grass itself, um, and I used a burnt umber, uh, sorry, a burnt sienna number seven. And uh, it just basically roughly get it in, just get 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 a sort of a, a nice sort of um, uh, sort of shape that sort of leads leads up towards the actual tree itself. Okay, I've gone back to my uh, or, uh, orange light number nine, and that is now I'm holding the pastel uh, horizontal, and I'm just flicking it up. So I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm having the um, uh, the um, the grass to um, how can I say to silhouette against the uh, um, the sand itself? Okay, so we just a little upward flick. All right, so we've just hopscotch forward a little bit. The bushes at the back, I used a um, a yellow ochre 0.5 for the highlights in the in the uh, in the tree itself and the bushes. Um, so once again, held the pastel on its side, flat on its side, and just skimmed it over. Just use the texture of the paper and that thing. Then the darker uh, um, uh, bushes in the foreground. Uh, that's an Indian red 0.5. Okay, so nice um, sort of warm, sort of ready color. Um, and um, it's 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 you you could have used burnt amber number f number three. Um, yeah, it would have worked that there. Um, but um, I just prefer to use the, um, the, the the Indian red number five. Um, and then we then went on with a uh, burnt sienna 0.7 as on top of for the highlights. So in other words, I just hold the pastel flat on its side and I just skip it over. I catch all the, the, the texture of the paper. But if you go onto my site, the Patreon, I'll give you I'm giving you fine fine detail and just to show you exactly how to how to do that. See, but all I'm doing is I'm just skimming it over. Okay, so we, we 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 started with the Indian Red Five, and that's in the bushes. Uh, then we used a bit of burnt sienna seven, uh, that's in the foreground bushes and the far bushes. Once again, trying to repeat the colours, and then uh, we're now using a bit of yellow ochre just for the for the finer highlights. Uh, the little twigs and stuff that I'm using, I'm still back to the uh, Indian Red, uh, and I'm using the sharp edge of it. Okay, so uh, there you can see I'm bringing there nice little sharp edge. Um, putting a little bit of shadow in there, um, holding it flat on its side, and just very gently just taking it over that grass just so that we've got a bit of shadow coming through there. Um, and please get all your shadows coming from the same angle, same same way. Um, I've seen a picture once where the sunlight was coming from four different directions. Okay, you can't do that. That's completely illegal. Uh, get the continuity coming through all the way through. And um, the other thing I wanted to just mention on the, um, on the shape of the tree that the um, uh, please give the viewer and something a nice sort of a characterful type of tree, uh, not this boring uh, straight up and down gum tree pole type of, uh, of effect. Okay, so you can see mine's leaning slightly, um, and um, we've um, uh, what are you going to say? We've 
um, giving it sort of a bit of uh, bonsai type character. What I've just done now is I've actually sprayed uh, the foreground bushes and the tree itself because uh, I need to work on top of it um, without the color blending. All right, so um, so we just give it. I've used a just a hairspray. Uh, you can use alcohol. I'm not one for these um, uh, art uh, fixatives. Uh, they tend to uh, to me they destroy the paper. So the hairspray is good. It's a water based. Um, and it's, it's, it's nice and effective, okay, so easy on the lungs. Right, I'm using a, a, um, a light orange, 0.9, um, and I've, when I was working on the trunk, I, hold, I held the, um, the uh, pastel vertical, but on its side, and I then pushed it up and sideways, so that you've got that sort of automatic sort of roundness coming through, um, on the on, on the trunk itself, so it's very important to get that roundness. Because remember, the, the tree is round, the, the trunks and the branches are round, uh, so you've got to get that gradation of highlight or shadow, whatever, uh, just to change it. There. So now I start to look at. Okay, now I'm going to start shaping my tree itself. Um, I, I, I like to kick off with the um, um, the, the trunk first, and then uh, start playing around then with my branches. All right, so that one I've just done now, that one is coming forward. And uh, uh, so we have it then silhouetting against uh, that branch at the back. So the other one is uh, automatically I pushed that one uh, back and I have pulled that other one forward. Okay, so um, uh, this is the fun part of it. Oh, I just love, love doing this little bit here. This is just, just, just the best. Okay. Um, all right, so looking at always just putting highlights on the right-hand sides of the branches, have the branches going forward, backwards. Okay, so uh, um, the one in the center there, you can see it's coming forward there. I've um, just put a, just a dash of, of light on the right-hand side, um, so that's coming forward. So it'll catch a little bit on the left-hand side, uh, whereas the trunk is, is exposed to more light. So uh, that's where you get the three-dimensional look that's actually coming through. So um, also I just applied it very much of a, uh, what would you call it, a impressionistic way, just a dash of color here and there. Um, so you've got the speckle of light coming through, falling through the branches, catching a branch here and there. Um, and then it's, it's not just one like solid, 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 solid side thing. All right, so we just touch it all the way through. Okay, so now the one branch here on the left here, I kind of messed it up there. Uh, we're going to go back there and just, just sort that out. Um, it's a bit, um, bit, a bit messy there, and um, I'm now working on the same the uh, um, the orange uh, light uh, number nine, and uh, you'll see nicely how the pastel actually works very nicely after you sprayed it. Okay, so it's just an upward flicking motion, and it gives you the impression of of the grass itself. Uh, so just remember my style. I, I describe it very much of a, a what would you call an impressionistic. Uh, realism. So where's where's critical? I put the detail in. Like now, I'm putting just a little bit of a white highlights and branches, uh, so that it just breaks up the the, the, the tree and the bush itself. Okay, see that they just that they just see the difference that it actually makes uh, to um, in in getting your uh, um, uh, the realism to come out in the actual pictures themselves. Okay. So um, especially the little bush there to the right. Can you see just that touch of little color there and uh, um, it's it's it just it just oh, it just creates a nice little uh, contrast in it. So we all the time we're working with dark against light, light against dark. Okay, so where it's dark in the bush, we put a, a highlight, and where it's light in the bush, we put a dark. So um, it's contrast, contrast, contrast. Okay, so all right. So um, we're just doing the highlights now in the actual tree itself. We in the bushes, um, back to that uh, yellow ochre. Um, and we can starting to see now that the old picture sort of starting to stay, take shape. Um, um, all right, so we've just gone a little bit forward. I'm going to touch back up in the sky again there, just a, just a, just a little touch there. And I'm using now that same uh, 11 yellow number 12 just for that little extra bite, okay, just that little bit of extra, um, um, how can I say, bit of extra highlight in that there. Um, and you know, if you can get you can get these highlights working on your trees and stuff, man, I tell you what, it is such an attraction for people to buy them because it looks so real. Okay, so um, um, just work on it, work on it, work on your light and your shadows, and at the end. Uh, um, but, but, try, but try and use source material. I've painted so many babies, I can just paint them out my head. 
So, uh, but I understand the characteristics of the tree, and therefore I am able to literally just uh, sit down and, and, and paint a baobab without having to go back to, to um, uh, how can I say, to, to source material. Right, just once again, just doing the highlights in that there, and um, we, we're almost there. We're almost there. So um, uh, then we, we need to look at also, um, it, 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 there's always a silhouetting effect that you get there. So you can see the bushes, the, sorry, the branches on the left of the tree, nice and dark, so they're silhouetting against the, the, uh, the light clouds at the back there. And then we have the, the highlighted um, uh, branches that are silhouetting against the dark. Now I'm using a um, gold orchid 0.5, and I push this into the shadow areas of the, uh, of the tree. So it's the highlight, uh, can I put it, the, the shadow highlights in the tree itself. Okay, so um, I always like to do that just to leave it just dark and uh, like it where it tends to be a little bit um, I don't know I don't I don't like it okay so um, so I'm just doing it. you can see I'm just skimming over the I just skimmed it over the branches and I've left there uh, sort of a couple of little almost hollow dark spots there so sort of hollows actually in the tree itself and um, it, of course they really can old old trees in that there so when you're doing a baby please don't do a young one uh, I've got no character the very very old ones are a problem as well. Uh, because they tend to be a little bit too, um, how can I say, um, they're, they're difficult to paint in the sense that they've got a lot of branches and stuff in it there. So this one that I've got here is, is just the, sort of the perfect perfect size. Okay, so uh, um, um, sort of um, in, in human being um, uh, sites, we would say uh, in your, sort of in your 40s. Okay, I'm just putting a bit of signature on the right-hand side there with the... Um, um, with a, a pastel pencil, so I always use the pastel pencil for that. And then now what I'm doing is I'm using the pastel pencil just to have a little bit of scraggly branches showing here and there. Uh, just the final sort of finishing touches, just don't, don't overdo it, you know, just here and there, just have them sort of sticking up in it there, and uh, you'd be surprised what a difference it actually makes to your picture. And um, okay, so now if I look at that uh, little bush that I'm working on there now, uh, I sort of say to myself, uh, hang on a second, I, I need to, the other one just behind it there, it's kind of a little bit, what would we call it, a bit lost, and at this, I'm going to join it up uh, with that other, other bush there as well, so I'm going to make it sort of all one together, all right, um, and this is how I do, especially the bushes in the foreground, where I do what we call pushing and pulling, so in other words, bring some forward, push the other one, push them back, and uh, in, in that way you get a natural look in the actual picture itself. So I hope you've enjoyed this and um, we'll be dealing with a couple of other ones. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, God bless.